A very, very warm hello from beautiful Australia. My name is Susanna Bransgrove and I'm incredibly excited to be part of this first ever global online family business conference hosted by Nikkei and CC from African family firms. Bringing family businesses, experts and advisors together from all across the globe, I think is just such a wonderful idea. And the ability to share ideas, solutions and to support each other is just incredible. So when Nikkei did ask me if I wanted to be involved in this, of course, I jumped at the chance to be part of it. I've been working with family businesses now for more than 12 years and love my sector or love the work that I do. Why am I so passionate about it? Well, I'm a third generation from our own family business. As I said, I live in Australia, in Brisbane, sunny Queensland, but I'm originally from Germany and was born, raised, educated there. So the family business that I've grown up to be part of is in Germany and has been around for 375 years. Doing the maths of that on that, of course, means it's going to be difficult to be a third generation of a family business that's been around for 375 years. But the story behind this is that my grandfather did buy this business after the Second World War from the last remaining family member, the original family that founded it. So even though it hasn't been in our family for 375 years, we are all very passionate about keeping that name alive and for this family business to continue to run. I remember being part of um, you know, going, going into the family business on weekends and listening to my dad tell the stories when he got home at the kitchen table, the issues that he had with, with employees or with unions, of course, and, and all sorts of other issues that he had to solve. But there are a lot of fond memories of um, supporting my dad and distributing Easter eggs, although there is a bit of an embarrassing story behind that. So I've grown up with family business from the inside, feeling it, understanding it, being part of the good and the bad. And I'm also used to supporting families and business from the outside in, listening into the issues that they're encountering. So what I would like to do today is share a bit about my perspective of what it takes for families and business to survive in a time of crisis like this. One thing I'm very mindful of is that it's all very easy to be talking about things that we all should do or could do and what the opportunities are. But living through it is a very different thing. So I appreciate that for each one of you listening, you hopefully will take something out of this, but I'm hoping that you can also tell that I'm not coming at this from a, you should do this. So let me share with you a bit of a presentation that I've put together and, uh, and the ideas and, and thoughts that I've um, experienced over the last few years. So as I mentioned from a topic, I would like to focus on how to survive as a family in business in difficult times. So my emphasis is going to be on the family side. What has been really interesting over the last five or six weeks since we've been going into self-isolation, uh, which is what we've been experiencing here, lockdown certainly hasn't been part of the Australian um, framework as yet, but certainly in the last five or six weeks, listening in and talking to my family business clients, but also talking to my own family and other advisors and consultants in this space, there was something that really stood out for me. We're all really familiar with the concept of the grief cycle that we go through. And what has been interesting is that you know, we understand this, the parts of the grief cycle being denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And we've all experienced this or seen other people go through it. What I've never seen though is people going through and even experiencing going through the cycle in very quickly after each other. So the first one was the grief of and the fear of what was happening next, um, the impact on business, then the impact on the personal life, and then it might go back to the impact on business. So there are multiple cycles that we're all completing in very, very short duration, and we might never actually get to the acceptance stage before something else is triggering a different form of grief. And of course, grief shows, or the reason for grief can be very different ones. So whether it's financial loss, uh, not being able to see your elderly parents, for the younger generations or the next generation, not being able to see their friends, not being able to play a game of soccer. There are so many different issues that have been triggering grief. And of course, what's interesting is not just that there are so many different trigger points for one person, but that there isn't a person who's immune to this. So within a family and a family business, every single person within that family unit will be impacted by this crisis. 
and we'll be in different stages of this grief cycle at different points in time. So usually when you have a family in business, one person might be experiencing a difficult situation, maybe two, maybe three, but for everybody to be impacted means that the response to this needs to be probably different as well. And that if you haven't dealt with family grief cycles or family problems or individual problems beforehand, maybe now is a very good time to think about the importance of family unity in times like these. What makes it even more difficult or what impacts family businesses um, more so in times like these, which is also a bit unusual, is of course that family businesses are not purely profit-driven organisations, which is probably something I love so much about family businesses. And whilst it is such a beautiful thing, why this is difficult now is that the care that they have for their staff and their community and other stakeholders creates additional stress. Because as I mentioned before, each one of the staff members and their families and the community they operate in is also impacted by this. And family businesses really truly care about the people who work for them and the people who are around them. In addition to that, to make good decisions for business also brings some additional complexity. So you can make the best possible decision for your business, but there might be a flow through effect to some family members who might be working in that business because as a director or executive of your family business, you're also a family member. You might be a father, a mother, a daughter or a son. And the decision that you're about to make might see one of your family relationships, your brother, your sister, your daughter, your son, your father, somebody, your cousin, lose their job or be negatively impacted. So it carries a very personal, there's a very personal attachment to that and a very emotional link to who you're impacting with the decisions you make for business. And so you can see how people who work as executives and directors and family businesses try to make, find a fine line or make good decisions based on what's best for family, which might not be best for business, and what might be best for business might not be best for family. So it's a complex situation to be in. In addition to that, for those family executives who work in the business and have to make the hard decisions and might spend 16, 18 hours a day at work trying to deal with difficult circumstances, um, clients, suppliers, staff members, when they get home, there's no reprieve. There's no safe haven. So when they're with their family members, of course, the family relies on the business to survive and their livelihood often depends on it. I like to always say the more family business members or the more family members rely on the business, the higher the risk to the entire family. So they're anxious and they want to know that their future is secure and they want answers and they sometimes want to provide input because they just want to help and they feel helpless and they just want to be able to contribute something to feel that they're part of the solution and they can make things better. So all of this creates a real melting pot of emotions of you know, people who find it, who just sometimes want to be left alone and yet they, they have this, the family who are the shareholders, the stakeholders in all of this, who want answers. So what I've seen in some families, even though they have got good frameworks in place, those that carry the responsibility and the burden of making decisions for the family in the business, sometimes means that what they actually want to do most is somehow just withdraw. Because being the leaders in business means it's really difficult to also then have the energy to drive the conversations in the family. So what I really want to have a look at is, well, how if the people who are making the business decisions are, are struggling to also keep the family informed and family alive, then how do we keep on top of the emotional roller coaster that exists for every family member and every staff member? How do we communicate effectively, and particularly on the family side in these times? And how do we balance the family needs with the business needs? From experience, what I've been finding over the years of working with family businesses, that as much as we talk about the concept of family business best practice, which looks at the frameworks of business governance alongside family governance and the necessity to invest in both, to make sure that the family has articulated values and vision and family um, constitution, so framework of rules and standards, and for the business to have 
of course, vision and values and, and have a business, like a board charter, sorry, and, and, and a business strategy to take it forward. In many cases, that's, that's not actually what's present. Most of the family businesses I get to work with when I start off with them, um, the majority of time is spent on the operation and that is quite normal. That is what the business is known for. That is what family members have been doing for a long period of time. And being on the operational side is comfortable. So the majority of time is sort of placed in what I call family business management or the operation around 70 to 80% of the time. And in many cases, our regular board meetings or strategic conversations and think tanks not even had. But I've attributed about 20% of the time in business being spent on the business governance. But if you spend 90% on the business, then it's clear that the family will probably get a very, very small share of what is left of time or attention and investment. And when I take people or family businesses through uh, a bit of a diagnostic to have a look at where they feel their time is spent and, and where they invest their time and what they're comfortable with, they're all very comfortable with what's happening on the operational side. They're very much feel in control and feel they've invested and are very competent when it comes to their business operation. They recognize that they're mediocre when it comes to strategic thinking and mitigating risk and uh, governing their business. And when I ask them how much time they invest on family unity and making sure that the family is connected, that they have a common ground, that they've got a foundation to stand on no matter what, they start to falter and they know that they're probably not spending much time making sure that those who've been supporting the business are also being supported. And furthermore, when you start looking at how much time are they investing and how much energy are they investing into making sure that the individual family members are healthy mentally in particular, then they often admit that they're not spending any time to support individuals with their own values and their own purpose to make sure that they can contribute wholeheartedly and wholesomely to the family unit and also to the business if they so desire. One of my family um, families, one of the family members there who's the family champion, it's something I'm going to be talking about in a second, did go to uh, a conference and came back with the very wise words of one of the families pre presenting there that good business comes from good families. And it's something that's stuck with me and certainly stuck with her. But I'd like to extend on this and suggest that good business comes from good families and good families and united families come from healthy individuals who feel that they know who they are, what they stand for, and who can happily and easily contribute to the family as a whole. So you can see at the moment, the reality is in most families and business that there's very little attention paid to the individuals in the family. And what I often hear also is when family members do come to me in a first approach and they talk about the issues they're experiencing in family and it often shows up such a, in something along the lines of, I feel that there are issues in our family and I'm worried about these issues in the family, breaking the family and breaking the business in particular in time of crisis. So as mentioned before, we have a crisis that at the moment is impacting each and every individual family member. And if you don't have a framework of unity to connect people and combine people and support people, then there's a chance that you're going to lose family members um, out of the family connectivity and that they're going to hurt even more because the attention is all going towards the business. I think I've probably been harping on long enough about that one. <laughs> so the question then is, you know, why is there such an imbalance between the conversations that are being had and the time that's being invested into the business and what's happening on the family side? And the reason for that generally is that the people who are the business leaders or the one business leader is often not best placed to also lead the family. And I did sort of touch on that a bit beforehand when I mentioned that those who are responsible at the moment to lead the business through these difficult times probably don't have the energy to also come home and make sure that the family as a collective is okay. What they need is support from their family, not to also support the family. From my experience, what family businesses need is a family champion who can look after the other half of the conversations that are needed. Somebody who can support the family unity and who can also make sure that the individuals within it are okay. 
Identifying as the family champion really isn't easy. Being the family champion is even harder. What I've been finding is that naturally, not always, but mostly, those who, are, who feel comfortable or feel passionate about supporting the family side of the family business tend to often be the mothers or the sisters so, or the daughters. So the women within the family business tend to be more empathetic and understand the concept around the greater good or, or have time or have empathy to be able to align with that. Identifying as the family champion is not easy. Being the champ family champion is even harder. From experience, I know that it takes a family champion, somebody within the family who understands that there's something that is not working for the family as a collective to come forward and seek help. Often, it's the women in the family business who are more at ease or more comfortable and understand the greater good um, being so important for the entire family and business who will step forward to be the champion for the business. And you need that one person who can run the family in the same way that you tend to have one person who runs the family because there are two sides to a family business. There's the family and there's the business. Often we focus on the business, as I said, and there's nobody really supporting the family or running the family. Once you have identified and agreed for one person to lead the family and who and take the responsibility of looking after the emotional prosperity and the well-being of the individuals and the family as a collective, then you can really start working on putting communication frameworks in place to survive as a family in business. So providing regular communication, providing updates, allowing family members to understand what the implications are going to be of the decisions made in the business, asking questions, articulating fear, talking about their worries and, and what they need in the future, and also recognizing if you've got skills within the family that you haven't utilized, there needs to be an organized kind of framework to be able to get that to come to the fore and for it to be meaningful. So family champion really is what's needed. Being the family champion, as I said, is not easy. Without balance, though, the family can fracture in any crisis, and certainly in a crisis like this. And when the family fractures, the question really is what happens next. What we've been seeing over many years is that when families fracture, often the business tends to also completely fracture. So we are at a point in time when the business is already vulnerable and the family is vulnerable. And it will take a concerted effort and more input and more energy to make sure that both of those can survive together. So for those of you who are willing to take up the role as family champion, I take my hat off to you. It is really not an easy role, but it is a very important one that you can play. If you've got any questions or you would like some guidance on how to be that family champion, please feel free to contact me and I more than happily guide you through. I've been running a conference for women and family business as family champions last year already and I'm going to be doing the same this year. The first conference in July 2020 is going to be online um, and hopefully Nika and CC will be part of it as well. But as you can see, if you want to register your interest, share your thoughts or ask questions around the importance of the family champion. If you feel when you've been watching this that this is something that is, you're also very passionate about and that's within you, please just send me an email. I'm happy to talk you through it or to provide you any guidance. Thank you so much again for spending some time with me and letting me share my passion for everything family business, but in particular, the role of the family champion with you. If you are the one who identified with being the family champion or you've identified somebody in your family business who should be the family champion, I wish you all the very best. And I wish you and your family and your business all the best in the months to come. Take care. Bye.